Hi, welcome to Sculpt Your Body Show. My name is Michelle Kamina. I'm your host, and I'm looking forward to talking to today's expert. Um, she is a registered nurse, a certified a childbirth educator, a certified personal trainer, blogger, and author. She specializes in helping uh, reclaim your core strength and heal the diastasis recti muscle. I'm happy to introduce Julie Tupler today. How are you, Julie? Welcome to Sculpt Your Body Show. Hi, Michelle. Thanks for inviting me to speak about this topic. Yes, I'm really excited to dive into this because it's a new topic for me, even though I I, you know, I, I'm in the gym and I, and I, you know, I build muscle and I am also a personal trainer. This is kind of a new uh, perspective. So I'm really interested in knowing more about your Tupler technique. Now, this is a technique that you, um, that you founded and came up with. So tell me more about what, what the Tupler uh, technique is and how you got into this uh, unique field. Well, I think first, I should probably tell you what a diastasis recti is because that would make more sense. And then I would let you know how my Tupler technique works with this system. So the name of my business is diastasis rehab and it's for treatment of diastasis recti. So diastasis recti is a separation of the outermost abdominal muscles. All right, so diastasis means, diastasis means separation, and recti is the outermost abdominal muscles, the recti muscles. So everyone is born with their muscles separated, okay? And usually around three years old, um, after the nervous system develops, the muscles will come together. However, there is a weak spot in the connective tissue joining the muscles, all right, right at the um, umbilicus, at the belly button, all right? So if, if the baby is constipated or constantly crying or coughing, um, that's a forward force, all right? Um, if you see babies with an umbilical hernia, um, they have a very severe diastasis, okay? It's a severe diastasis. And um, if during childhood, uh, the child does gymnastics, which is a lot of arching the back and flaring the ribs, where the connective tissue gets, dry, uh, gets stretched sideways, um, this also creates. So really, this forward forceful or forward sideways stretching of the muscles is what causes it because in between the muscles is this connective tissue called the linea alba. Now, the reason why this is so important is because the function of these outermost abdominal muscles, their job is to support your back and to support your organs. When they separate, the connective tissue joining the muscles stretches sideways, okay, and becomes thinner. So now it's the weak connective tissue that's the support system but it's not a good support system for your organs so that's why sometimes people have a side effect of bloating after eating so after you eat the stomach goes forward and that's the bloating now a lot of times people think oh i'm allergic to wheat i'm allergic to dairy this and this and so they stop eating everything but they're still getting the bloating because the muscles are separated, and when you eat, the stomach gets bigger and the organs move forward. Okay, so that is why that um, it's a cause of constipation, cause of back pain, right? Because there's no support system for the back. And when the muscles are separated, it affects the posture. So usually you see people that have a diastasis are rounded over like this. And you see the seniors with the, with the bellies and kind of rounded over. Also, when the muscles are separated, it affects the pelvic floor. So women that have pelvic floor issues, um, it's a lot more difficult to, because there is a connection between the innermost abdominal muscle, which is the transverse muscle, which is connected to the outermost recti muscle. So there's a connection between the abdominal and the pelvic floor. So then it would be difficult to um, 
deal with some of the pelvic floor issues. So there's all sorts of side effects with this. And the bottom line is, the only way that you can get flat abs is if your muscles are together, okay? So if I, if I, if I don't get everybody on the fact that you're gonna have all these other side effects, all right? Um, a diastasis, a severe diastasis can put a pregnant woman at risk for a C-section. And the reason that if this is my uterus and this is my cervix, the cervix needs to be lined up with the vaginal canal. When the muscles separate and the connective tissue stretches sideways, the top of the uterus then tilts forward and then you see this downwards. So, um, and you can deliver a baby with a sideways pointing, a cervix pointing sideways. And also, if you have an umbilical hernia as an adult, that is a side effect of a diastasis. So if you fix the middle and you're open above and below, the chances of you having this surgery stay in place are not so good. All right, and that's what I just, I just got back from um, Germany and I spoke at the hernia conference. And what I spoke about is making the diastasis smaller before abdominal surgery to prevent incisional hernia. And what an incisional hernia basically means is that, the, that it, the, the surgery, the stitches come undone, okay? So by making the diastasis smaller, what my program does besides strengthening the muscles, it also strengthens the connective tissue. And, and if you're gonna sew connective tissue, it's much better to sew stronger connective tissue, all right? And then after the surgery, after you have abdominal surgery, doctors usually say, oh, don't lift anything over five pounds, okay? But if I go from a seated position to a standing position, that's my whole body weight. So then that's like my whole body weight of force on those stitches. So, so the point is, to, to before a patient has abdominal surgery, they need to strengthen the abdominals and know how to use them in the recovery process to maintain the integrity of the surgery. So I'm just wanting to let you know your viewers know that diastasis is, is a big issue and yet nobody is checked for it. And and my feeling is that every belly should be checked for a diastasis as part of any um, medical or fitness uh, evaluation. And you know and your clients can also check themselves, but it, it needs to be part of the conversation. It needs to be part of the conversation. Um, in terms of fitness, because um, it's really important to have a diastasis safe workout, all right, so that you don't make it bigger. Because the bigger it is, the more side effects that you're gonna have. And the longer it's gonna take to bring the muscles together. So now I can tell you what the Tupper technique is, all right? I, I, um, when I first moved to New York in uh, 1987, all right, um, I started working for a um, health club, and they said, you're a nurse, you should teach the prenatal class. So um, I thought, wow, that would be great. I, I, as a nurse, I always you know, wanted to do labor and delivery and never did, so it was my opportunity to work with pregnant women. And um, so once they found out that I was a nurse, Right, um, and and I had to sort of like create this program from scratch because really, ACOT, American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, had just written their guidelines, so there wasn't much going on. Size, so um, when they found out that I was a nurse, they started picking my brain about labor, and I realized uh, that childbirth. So I became a childbirth educator and realized that childbirth education comes at the end of the pregnancy and only prepares your mind. Now, you wouldn't run in a race in that train. Why would a woman do the hardest thing she's ever gonna do, labor, and not have that mind and body connection? It's important for her abdominals to be as strong as they can be. And, and my program during pregnancy can make a diastasis smaller. I just trained a professional in my last training and she was in her second trimester, six finger diastasis, and within three weeks during her pregnancy, she brought it down to three fingers, maintained that, and then was able to 
push with her abdominals, relax her pelvic floor because she had practiced it during her pregnancy. So that is basically how I started out with the program for the marathon of labor. So it was then that I discovered the diastasis. And as a nurse, I didn't have a clue. Just, I didn't have a clue what it was. So it was um, a lot of trial and error for me um, in developing this program, what works, you know, trying this, trying that, and, you know, everything and saying, oh, wow, that works well, I'm gonna do that. Like when the muscles were separated and we were doing the exercises, the, um, some of the people with the big dice said, I can't feel my muscles working. So then I took a scarf and I pulled the muscles together and I said, what about now? And I put them in the position that they're supposed to be. They go, I can feel them working great. So that's how I got started with approximating. So that is really, so when I look at the big picture, my program is really all about healing this stretched out connective tissue between the muscles. And the way I do it is, it, is with my four-step research and evidence-based program. And my statistics hopefully will be published in a medical journal um, next year. I'm working with a doctor at University of uh, Michigan. So the big picture in healing the connective tissue is I want to take the connective tissue. Okay. So if this is my, this is a muscle and this is a muscle and this plastic bag is my stretched out connective tissue. What I'm wanting to do is approximate or reposition the muscles and the connective tissue. So I want the connective tissue to be repositioned. So I'm taking the stretch off of it and continuously putting it in a narrow position. Okay, just it's like if I was going to heal a broken bone, what do I do? I cast it and I continuously keep it in that position. So it's the same thing with this. I continuously keep it with my diastasis rehab splint. And then the muscles. I want to bring the muscles close together so, so the person can feel the muscles working. However, when we look at the function of the muscles under ultrasound, if the muscles are four fingers apart or more, they move sideways. So when I try and engage the transverse, which is the innermost muscle attached to the outermost muscle, it goes back a little bit and then moves sideways. So it move, if it moves sideways, it's what? Stretching the connective tissue and it's not strengthening the muscles because the muscles have to be close together and move in the sagittal plane of movement front to back to get strengthened, okay? So number one is I reposition the muscles and the connective tissue with my diastasis rehab splint. In week four of the program, I um, double splint, which is wearing one or two, because if you have a big belly or, or long waisted, you need to wear two. Mm -hmm. And um, holding a scarf. The closer you bring it together, the faster we're going to heal that connective tissue. So number one is repositioning muscles and connective tissue. Number two is developing transverse, which is the innermost abdominal muscle. Developing this transverse muscle awareness with activities of daily living. All right. So, so the first six weeks of the program, um, you know, with healing diastasis, we're not doing any exercise programs. All we're doing is cardio. All we're doing is walking on a treadmill, upright stationary bike, elliptical machine, no running, no jumping. All right. Because um, we're wanting to heal the connective tissue while developing transverse muscle awareness and strength with the exercise, all right? So with activities of daily living, when you sneeze, when you cough, when you go to the bathroom, when you stand up, when you sit down, when you pick up your baby, you have to remember to engage this innermost transverse muscle because if you don't engage it, it goes forwards because you use your muscles with every breath you take and with every move you make. So it's really important to engage bringing that belly button forward, you're not allowing the connective tissue to heal. Remember, we don't want to have any forward stretching of the connective tissue or any sideways stretching. And the third thing is strengthening the innermost transverse muscle, which nobody ever does. 
okay? Nobody ever takes the time to do this. So this is really important to develop transverse strength. And when we do this, also strengthening the connective tissue between the muscles. And I'm thinking to myself now, why is this happening? I didn't know why the connective tissue was getting stronger with the little exercises that I did until I read Dr. Helene Langevin's research on connective tissue. And she basically said is that when you do this backward compression, which is basically I do these little isometric exercises, when you do these, it creates this microcurrent in the connective tissue, and that is what remodels and heals it. So, um, so I was very happy um, to find that out. Um, so these little exercises, because a lot of times people say, oh, if you wear a splint, it's gonna weaken the muscles. No, it's just for positioning muscles and connective tissue. These little isometric exercises, we start out at five sets of 100, and then in week 18, the program progresses for 18 weeks. In week 18, it goes to 20 sets of 100. So that's 2,000 a day, okay? There's no way that there's any weakening of any muscles here, all right? So the um, program is four steps, um, wearing the splint, double splinting, um, getting up and down together, um, getting up and down correctly, standing, 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 seated to back like and back line up, all right? Um, in week three of the program, um, we start head lifts, all right? And we start double splinting. Now, a head lift is a substitute for the crunch. And a crunch, creates a diastasis or makes it worse. And I'm going to tell you why, because everybody wants to know. In a backline position, right, it is impossible to engage the shoulders 100%. So what happens is when the shoulders come off the floor, if you put your, if you bring your belly button to the spine and then you come up and the shoulders come up, you will feel the muscle moving forward and you're not able to hold it in. And the higher you come up, the further it comes out, okay? And that's why you see people that do a lot of crunches have a dome thing because the muscles are moving forward and the connective tissue is getting stretched. So, um, so, so that's why any exercise, roll-ups and roll-backs, you're not able to engage uh, the transverse. We don't want to do any downward facing abdominal exercises with the diastasis because all the weight of the connective tissue, um, all the weight of the organs goes on the connective tissue. Once it's closed, then you can do that. Um, and in week six, um, we teach our, um, our clients a diastasis safe workout, which means um, that they're not doing anything to um, open the diastasis up again, okay? They're not doing any exercise where they're arching their back or they're not able to hold transverse in certain positions or, you know, are difficult. Um, so, so basically, um, that's how it, that, that's how it works. It's a pretty, um, you know, as I said, first six weeks, um, focusing on healing the neck tissue by um, not doing any exercise. Because in a diastasis safe workout, we're working the innermost transverse muscle. So if I'm getting ready to like, do a military press, what do I do? I bring my ribs in because if my ribs are out, it's stretching the connective tissue and I can't engage transverse. So I bring the ribs in, transverse in, my knees are soft if I'm standing, okay? Because if my knees are locked, then it brings the top of my pelvis forward and it arches my back and flares my ribs. So I have ribs in, transverse in, knees soft, all right? So now I'm starting with my belly button in my inner spine, which I call fifth floor. So on the work part of the exercise, I'm gonna go from my inner spine to my outer spine. It's an isometric squeeze. I call it from fifth to sixth floor. So I'm stabilized here, and then I'm, I start at the inner spine, and then on the work part of the exercise, and the work is going against gravity. So if I'm doing a military press, starting here, and then I'm, doing, I'm squeezing my abdominals as I lift my arms, and then I stay at the um, inner spine as I come down. 
okay? So I squeeze on the up. If I was doing a squat on the down, I just hold it to the spine, and on the up, I'm squeezing from two to six four. I, so with every repetition, we're working the transverse. And initially, it's like patting your head and rubbing your belly. But um, it's really the best way to work out because all the power then is coming from your core. All right? Mm -hmm. And you have to have, and so in order to start working out, um, our clients have to have, be doing 10 sets of, so 1,000 transverse a day. They have it strong enough to be able to then work out and then use it with every repetition. Mm -hmm. That's great. And, and you've mentioned before that this has mainly been designed for uh, maternal type, you know, treatments, but it- well, but that's, they can as well. um, I initially was maternal fitness, but then, you know, when the, the, the men would come in with the, you know, with their wives, you know, we call them the fetus police, and, and, and the women would say, check my husband. All the men had the diastasis from doing the crunches and stuff. They all had it. So in 2009, um, I became um, diastasis rehab. So now I treat men, women, and children. Okay? And I do... A gymnast would have this problem, too. A gymnast? Maybe. Yeah, gymnast, yes. Um, yeah, gymnast, I had one woman that was um, had a small baby, vaginal birth, didn't push for long, and had like a, a 10 finger diastasis, and never did, I couldn't figure out, no yoga, didn't do the exercise, but she was a gymnast as a child. So she started her pregnancy with the diastasis, and then it you know, got really much bigger. So in 2009, um, I became diastasis rehab. In 2009, I also started training medical and fitness professionals all over the world. And the um, program has been translated into six other languages. And I just came out with my third book, uh, Together Tummy. And um, we also have, excuse me, have the Together Wear, which I have a tank top that the splint attaches to. It just makes it easier to put it on and keeps it in place better. So that just came out actually last week. So Fabulous. Fabulous. cutting edge stuff. I had no idea. And I feel like I need to check myself, right? I had a very large baby. He was at 10 pounds, three ounces, 23 inches long. So I naturally, I birthed him naturally, but you know, it, uh, it probably did some, some damage or did, you know, definitely stretched it out. I, I can tell you that you definitely have it. <laughs> you definitely have it. I have checked thousands of people. And if you've had a baby, 99.99999 have it. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm sure that I need to take your test that myself, a, a self test to be sure. But I, I'm, I know how big I got at the time. And I really did stretch myself. Um, and even though I, I went back, it, it definitely had to have done some some uh, some changes in there so you know really really smart I, I i need to know more about this so that i can correct anything that i have so that later in life because you're saying this is not just an age thing it's not just a female thing people can all no, this no. I, see men, or I see men when they come up their diastasis is so bad it can be caused by the big you know the pregnancy but that pregnancy is not the only cause um if you're in a car accident and you have a source Sometimes people get that. If you have abdominal surgery where they blow your belly up with air, that can cause a diastasis. Crunches cause a diastasis. So there are many, you know, many causes of this. And I've seen men when they sit up, they have this like, it looks like an alien coming out of their body. All right, now that is a very severe diastasis. Very severe. If you see an, an Audi belly button, um, if you look at the before and after, um, photos of the men and the women on my website, you yeah. will see that many of the, that you will see, the belly button changes. Once you strengthen the connective tissue, it brings support to the belly button, it goes from an alley to an inning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I have a lot of uh, uh, runner friends and that claim they have a, a, a soft core or weak core. And, you know, probably just all stems from not having those strong, you know, abdominal, you know, tissue. Yeah. If, and they and they have that weird looking belly button, okay? You know what I'm talking about? And they're straight up and down. 
If you have a diastasis, you're straight up and down. As soon as you bring the muscles together, that's when you get your waist back. And that's when you get your flat belly. Oh, this this is the stuff we need to know for women. We that's you know, we're always fighting oh, for men for men too. For men too. For men too. So we're always fighting that little pouch pooch that we have down there. So um you're really making a lot of making a difference in a lot of people's lives so thank you for sharing this and i i look forward to catching more of your your uh, you have webinars and uh, you travel speaking around at medical conferences and, and fitness events um i think it just needs to get more more recognition for sure yeah so thank you for doing that's what that's what i'm working on that's why i'm here today you know, to bring about diastasis awareness because it has been ignored by the medical community. It is a functional problem. It's a functional problem with the body. When the muscles are separated, the body doesn't work right. It just doesn't. And it can be corrected, right? So that it can be corrected. You know, if it's corrected with surgery, all they're really doing is stitching. They might use it because the connective tissue is weak, they might use mesh. And once you start using mesh, boy, that's, that becomes a problem. And it's a real, because the mesh moves around and it's just, you can be allergic to it. So, um, and, and um, when you look at somebody that's had a tummy tuck, where they, you know, they would basically, what they do is they cut you from hip bone to hip bone, they lift everything up and then they take the connective tissue like this and all they do is stitch it. And then they, Get you back again and then they make a hole for your belly button and that's what they do um when you look at those versus mine there, there there's no tone it just looks kind of like you know kind of like puffy mm -hmm. uh, not like tone mm -hmm. like when, when you see the before and after pictures on my website you can see the, the outline of the muscles you see the way they look toned yes. you know yeah. i mean they're toned because We've strengthened muscle, we've strengthened connective tissue. When you just sew the connective tissue, there's no strengthening of the muscle and there's no strengthening of the connective tissue. If you must have a tummy tuck to, to deal with the skin issue, then it's still important to do my program so that the connective tissue is stronger, easier to sew, and so that you maintain the integrity of the sutures after the surgery by knowing how to use your abdominals in the recovery process so you don't put force on the skin. Right. And, and I'm certain, you know, based with the tummy and everything, that nutrition has to play a part in that recovery process so that it doesn't expand and, and you know, and, uh, and damage the, the, the healing that's going on, right? Nutrition has to be a part of it. The patient has to be a part of it. If you prepare for shoulder surgery and knee surgery, the most important surgery to prepare for is abdominal surgery because you use your abdominals with every move you make and with every breath you take, okay? So it's much more important to prepare for abdominal surgery than shoulder or knee surgery, okay? Yeah, no, thank you for that. Thank you for shedding light on this important topic. I'm going to I'm going to learn more about that, um, you know, as, as some time goes on, I'm going to pop on your webinars and, and, and learn more about that. I know before we finish up today, you have something for the audience that you want to share that's going to help them, a free gift. Can you tell us what that is? Yes, I have a free gift that I'd like to, to share because um, it's really important to learn more. So I have, um, um, I have five videos but the, the ones that are probably most significant to your, um, to the people watching this would be either the Mummy Tummy um, for the women or the Say Goodbye to Your Dead Guy for the men. Um, so I have, um, it's, the video is streamed, um, it's $25. So um, I've sent you the links to the pages and there's a code that you use um, like you're like you go to buy it, and then you put the code in for twenty five dollars, and then it doesn't cost you anything. And then um, we'll be sending you the the code um, to do the streaming stuff to watch it. That's great, great. Thank you for being so generous. I appreciate that. I look forward to getting that myself. I I really want to educate myself, and that's this is what this summit is about: is to just bring awareness to all of these techniques. Right. Thank you, and thank you for doing that. That's so important. 
to, you know, to really um, educate people on these issues. Yes. Well, thank you, Julie. I know you have, uh, you're, you're in the middle of your day, and I just want to thank you for taking time to be on Sculpture Body Show today. It was my pleasure, okay. and thank you for asking me. Yeah, we'll stay connected. Um, say aloha to New York City, and uh, anytime you're in Hawaii, please connect. You have a wonderful day today, Julie. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, are we are we off? You stopped recording.